Hi, I'm Janet Prey with Islander Sewing Systems and today's video is all about organizing your sewing space. So if you need to set up your sewing room or you want to rearrange it or just get your sewing mojo restarted, this is the video you want to see. So stay tuned, I've got lots of great tips for you. Step one is nobody's favorite, but it has to be done. So cleaning, vacuuming, dusting, and then collecting all of your different notions and items and fabrics. So by collecting them in piles like I have here, I can tell what size container that I need for, say, my tape measures. Uh, you can see here, I found the containers that fit and I've got all my 9 to 15 inch zippers all in one container. Um, my cutting equipment, the cutters and the blades and the discarded blades I keep in here as well. Beside my sewing machine I have a drawer and in the drawer I keep this and this is sewing machine needles of all sizes and types. It's actually the container is a like for beads, you can get them at the craft store. And I just popped the whole lid right off of this one so I could access it easily. But then I have my back stock in one with the lid on it. But easy access is always makes your job more efficient. The table I'm standing at is an excellent option, especially if your sewing room is compact. This particular table has two leaves. I only have the one leaf up at the time. So you can see it will collapse down. It, you can cover it with a cutting mat. But what's really cool here is that it rolls on casters and it rolls pretty easily as you can see. And I'm on carpet. But on this side I have space for all of these. And actually these little um, plastic containers came with the cabinet. And slide these right in here. Here's some of my favorite project boxes. We'll talk about those later. And then on the other side, hoo -hoo -hoo, you could actually stack, uh, you could put bolts of fabric in here, or again, you can have a lot of notions. Shelving units, inexpensive uh, shelving units, you can get those anywhere. The discount stores. This cabinet just happens to be a garage sale find, but it had nice small drawers, and each one is labeled. Now, I can't tell you how happy I am I finally did this because now, anytime I need a snap or my Zacto knife or hook and eyes, I know exactly where they are, and they're all together in one place. Now another thing that you might want to take advantage of, and that is having some kind of a clothing rack. Now you may have a closet in your studio, but if you don't, you can always purchase a collapsible rack like this one. And then I hang, hang your muslins that you're working on, so they're not all balled up someplace. And then you can easily access them. Patterns that we have turned into tagboard patterns will hang here on a hook. And these are patterns that you're going to use over and over and over again. You don't want to put just every pattern on a tag board. So some of them we're working on right now are on pattern paper. Well, we just used a bulldog clip and the same hook so that we can hang it neatly out of the way. We aren't going to lose the pieces, but it's uh, taken care of and we're not going to lose it. So it's the same as with most things that you want organized and efficient. A place for everything and everything in its place. So starting out fresh with our new organized sewing room, we want to make sure that we have all the basic supplies that you usually use. So I kind of went through a list of the ones that are that I use an awful lot. So. Um, I always, uh, obviously we use a lot of interfacing. So you want to have the types of interfacing that you use most often. Maybe a knit interfacing, a lightweight like our light and stable, medium, and then a firm interfacing. So just have a nice selection on hand. 
some muslin for making your muslins or quick samples of different techniques. Some dotted paper so that if you have to quick make a new pattern piece or maybe you are using a sloper and you uh, need some paper. Uh, another thing I use a lot of is the tapes, the uh, stay tapes and the double-sided tape. And you know if you've watched us, we use that a lot when we're making t-shirts and things. So double check, make sure you have the, it comes in black and white a lot of them. So maybe you've got the white, but you're going to need the black. So double check that. Um, so, uh, tools that I really like to use, a point turner. A six inch ruler. I usually have three or four of these and I have them at different places throughout the studio. Um, the stitch ripper. Okay, I wanted to show you this one because this is my favorite type of stitch ripper today. And they come in different configurations. Some of them are two ended, some are one. And there is your stitch ripper. But what's really cool about this particular stitch ripper is when this one gets dull, you can buy replacements on Amazon. So as soon as this one gets dull, or I broke the tip off of mine the other day being very aggressive, you just pull the old one out, put the new one in, and you're good to go. And another great thing is, is they pop inside so they travel uh, easily. Okay, chalkeners. The chalkener comes in four colors, so make sure you have at least two colors. And maybe you should check if you need any refill chalk. So you might want to double check that and you could buy any of those colors as a refill. Another thing I'm going to recommend is cleaning your cutting mat. So we all know that our cutting mat gets little fibers uh, burrowed down into it and the best way to get those out is with a high polymer eraser not just a regular old gum eraser but this particular type of eraser whenever you see the little hair sticking out from where you cut you just rub it with this and they come right back up and out and you need to do it even if you can't see them because it will dull your blade so you want to keep your mat as clean as possible and if you can't get it clean and it's old and warped don't bother trying to rehydrate it get a new one you'll be very happy and your blades will last a lot longer if you do. Rotary cutter, make sure you have the size blades. And I like to keep at least four to six blades because you never know and I don't want to run to the store every week. So I, I like to make sure I always have those in stock. Two pairs of scissors. A nice cutting pair of scissors for the basic sewing needs. And then a nice fine tipped point. The fine tip point is what we need for clipping around curves and really getting into nice tight corners. The tips on the bigger scissors aren't as efficient to do that and they aren't as sharp at the tip as the little tailor points we have here. So that is very important. And of course I like to have thread clips. These are just inexpensive they're easy to grab and clip your threads as you're sewing. So I always have one of these at every sewing machine and sometimes even at the ironing station. Check your rulers. You may, I use a lot of quilters rulers, but you, um, the curved rulers are also really important for drawing in hems and necklines and arm size. So if you're working on patterns or altering patterns, take a look at what kind of rulers you might need. Uh, needles. I always go through all my needles and funny thing is today I noticed the one needle that I like to always have and I'm out of. So I'm going to order that later today and that's the super needle. So the super needle is the one that you can put through things that might be a little sticky or have some residue from um, spray glue or something on it and it'll keep sliding right through. But I always like to have 12 universal. You can use a 12 universal in so many things. If you're in a pinch, you can use it a lot of places. Jeans needles. We all end up having to hem a pair of jeans here or there, even if we don't work on denim. So jeans needles 14 is a pretty good one to have, but I keep 16 as well. A stretch needle and a microtex. Those are the ones that I want to make sure I always have. But that would be up to you 
depending on the type of sewing and fabrics that you use. Then the last thing I wanted to suggest that you take a look at or have is some type of manual. Now, we all get a manual that comes with our machine, and obviously you want to have that close at hand. But this little guide I picked up, I believe on Amazon, it's a wonderful little manual about a sewing machine repairman and lots of little things very easily described that you can do and not have to take your machine in every time for just a simple little hiccup. Pressing cloth. Silk Organza is our favorite, so we make our own. This is a smaller one. I usually make them a little bit bigger than this. Depends on what I'm working on. But recently, I came up with the idea of taking a scrap of fabric and making a little loop at the top. And then I could hang them. I could always find them before they were always on the floor someplace. So that's the equipment or the supplies that I need to have around. Yours, my, your list might be a little bit different, but in any case, go ahead, get those things together and make sure you're stocked up for the next few months. Here's my favorite way to organize my rulers and cutting equipment. Before I got this pegboard up, I was constantly trying, to, searching for things and never knowing quite where I forgot, I left it. So pegboard can be your best friend when it comes to your cutting and rulers. Here's another great suggestion for your ironing station. So we use a pegboard again. This time I just had a little fun and painted it. Um, but anyway, I have all my equipment up here, right, very handy. And with this kind of pegboard, you can even add a couple of shelves if you need them. So anything that you want at your ironing station is right here, easily at hand. Okay, now's the time that you might want to stop and think about your sewing skills and what you'd like to learn this year or add to or get better at. So let's say, for example, it's a welt pocket. Well, then search out some patterns. I have three of them here that cover welt pockets and they're wonderful step-by-step -step instructions. Perhaps you want to learn better top stitching. You like top stitching, but you haven't been really a proficient at it. We've got a great YouTube video on top stitching. Uh, underlining and lining, those are things that are skills that you may want to add. And underlining, we have a, a really great YouTube video on that as well. Um, zippers. So many sewers have a hard time with zippers or certain types of zippers. So we have easy zippers, five types of zippers, no pins, no basting, really easy step-by-step -step instructions. You may want to learn to sew without pins. And if you've followed me on YouTube, you know that's what I teach, how to sew efficiently, come out with a better product, and not have to use pins. So we've got materials for that as well. Maybe fitting is your issue. So many of us were taught to sew, but weren't taught to fit. If fitting is your issue, we've got a couple of really great series here on YouTube. And we have some DVDs as well. Uh, also kits. We've got lots of things at Islander to help you get your fitting um, taken care of. But take a look at our woven bodice series as well as our knit fit series here on YouTube if fitting is something you'd like to add. Um, anything else that you'd like to add, just make your list and go about collecting the materials and making your plan to improve your sewing this year. Now that you have everything organized, or you're getting there anyway, it's time to think about what you might want to add to your sewing room. So one thing might be sewing machine or serger cabinets. And with Islander sewing and pinless sewing, it's ultimately so important that you have a flat surface around your machine. So if a cabinet isn't going to fit in your sewing space or your budget right now, consider an extension table. 
you'll have to raise your chair up a little higher, but it'll still give you that flat surface that you need so that you can sew more efficiently. You'll sew faster and your stitching will be straighter and so much nicer. So um, consider that. Now for lighting in your studio, you want to get the closest thing you can to daylight because we know how the colors can be deceiving. Um, you might even mismatch the thread under poor lighting. So you can get, I have fluorescent or large fixtures with daylight bulbs in them. Um, and also this is a nice little addition. It's from a company called Daylight and it's just a very quick, easy touch and it gives you a real nice natural light for sewing. Um, a dress form. You may be ready to get a dress form. So you want to pick the dress form that is closest to your size without going over because you can pad them up if you need a little more in one area, but you can't take away. You also want to make sure that it's pinnable. So you can stick a pin in so that you can hold things in place while you're uh, designing or uh, constructing your project. One more thing while we're right here is an optivizer. Now this is something I've been using for 25 years and it gives me a magnification while I'm sewing. So if you have any difficulty, uh, even if you wear bifocals or trifocals, this will work great. It sits on the top of your head and it comes with three different strength magnifications. So you choose the one that's best for you. And when you need to thread the needle or see something very close, hand stitching, you just pop this down and you have a magnifier. And you'll have to get your project just at a certain distance, just like any other magnifier, but then it will be so much easier to see. Now I want to talk about the ironing stations. So let's come over here with me. And this is my very most favorite iron, and I have owned them all. There are a lot of home irons that are not efficient for sewing. So if you're working with a very lightweight iron, um, an inexpensive iron probably isn't giving you the, the press that you really need. And believe me, you need a good hard press if you do want to do nice top stitching. So consider that you need a heavier iron. You need an iron that delivers a lot of steam. And an appropriate iron only delivers the steam at the tip, not back here. Why? Because when you hit this and the steam comes out, it's dampening the fabric. And then as you slide your iron across, it's pressing it, drying it out, and flattening it. But if I've got steam coming out the whole iron, I'm never efficiently flattening it. So that's important. Um, the Gravity Feed Iron is no more expensive than any of the others, and sometimes less expensive than the steam generators, which are really loud and noisy. This, the water is up here. I don't have to fill this water, and you know I sew every day. I don't have to fill this water more than once a month. It has a filter in it so that it delivers the right water. No water is ever housed in the iron. The iron is not going to wear out like your household irons. This will last you for the rest of your life. So it's the water just gets delivered when you need it and it stays up there when you don't. And that's what keeps the iron from wearing out so fast. Now another thing that some people like to have which is a press. So right over here I have a press, and a press is a really great thing to have, particularly if you adhere a lot of firm interfacing. The firmer interfacings, the professional grades that we carry, take a higher heat. So if you're going to do a lot of that, and I mean a lot, because this takes up quite a bit of space and it is a little on the pricey side so I wouldn't get one of these if I was going to use it once or twice a year. But if you're going to do a lot this is great because you can set the exact temperature which you can't with any other iron only with a press. So the press is really easy to use. Um, some of them have steam, some do not. But it's just a matter of putting your item down here. If it doesn't, this one does not have steam, 
So I just give it a shot with some uh, spray bottle and a press cloth and you hold it down and it'll actually do the exact temperature you want and it'll beep when it's done. So it's a great efficient tool if you're going to do a lot of interfacing. One more thing. I forgot to tell you about the wooden pressing tools. So if you haven't seen our demo on wooden pressing tools, go to YouTube and you will find it. But we use these three pressing tools right here. And they will give you the more efficient press, a harder press. And again, for top stitching, you want those nice, neat presses. This is great because it goes right into the sleeve or the uh, pant leg. So you can press the seam without pressing wrinkles in the rest of the garment. But the rest of these are all demonstrated on, you, on the YouTube video, um, pressing wooden pressing tools. So go take a look at that, but these are absolutely, you don't want to do without these. I hope our video today has been inspirational in getting your sewing mojo going. Um, but I have two more tips I want to share because they're my two most favorite organizational tips when it comes to sewing. One is, uh, I spoke very briefly about my project boxes. So many of us have more than one going on at the same time. Um, so what I like to do is take all of the supplies and put them into a container. Maybe I've already cut it out and I've got all my threads, my buttons, my notions, everything in this container. Then when I come into work on my project, it's, I know where everything is and I don't lose my pieces like I used to, all the little pattern pieces that float around. So, and you get the clear plastic container, the size of the project. Now one more, and this is every sewer's conundrum. Get, what do I do with the pattern after I've used it? I can't get it back into the envelope. Well, let me show you my magic trick at getting it back into the envelope. So I've taken all my pattern pieces, and flatten them out a little bit, with the largest ones on the bottom. And remember, it came out of the envelope. It should go back in. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a fold. And then I'm going to press it down. Now watch how flat that is compared to the rest of it. It's just a matter of pressing it. And this is how they... And the reason I know this is because I have patterns uh, manufactured. And this is how they get them in the envelope to begin with. It's with a, a press. It's folded, and you just want to fold in all of the little extra pieces so that it's nice and even as you go. And again, just press. Now, we want to see what size we want this to be. And it's a little long, so let me make this just a little bit narrower. And then... About the right size right there. And it goes right back in here and back into the envelope. And all the pieces are neatly secured. And it's the same size as it was when I purchased it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I know you're going to enjoy sewing once you get everything organized. Join us on Tuesdays at 2 on Facebook at Islander Sewing Systems. And be sure to subscribe here on YouTube. Thank you.